Hello and welcome to this tutorial on functional groups. In this tutorial we're just going to have a look at uh, oxygen based functional groups like this one here. So this is a more simple form um, and most people know this one as the alcohol group. The alcohol group basically takes the form of an OH um, part of the molecule. So if we look at ethanol for example which is your common alcohol. Uh, that's uh, ETOH, ET just being shorthand for ethyl group which is just CH3, CH2, OH. Okay, so that's alcohols. Just basically, if you see an OH group in there, it's called an alcohol group, functional group. Now let's have a look at the next one, which is ketones. Now ketones have a carbonyl group, but what's important here is that the carbonyl carbon is connected to two other carbons. Compounds which contain ketones usually end uh, with the suffix on, for example, acetone, propanone, things like that. Okay, the next functional group is aldehydes. Now, this is why I mentioned the carbonyl being connected to carbons last time. So, aldehydes are connected to one carbon and one hydrogen. The next group are the acyl halides or the haloformal group, and these are normally have the suffix of the oil. Halide. An example of that would be the ethanol chloride, as denoted here. So as you can see, the name actually tells you a lot about the functional groups that are present in the molecule. If we just take a simple example of ethanol, and uh, the other example would be ethanol. As an organic chemist, or a chemist in general, you would be able to see straight away that the al, the suffix, uh, would denote it's an aldehyde and the all would denote that it's an alcohol. So straight away the functional group name actually tells you a lot about the compound. Okay, so the next one in the series is the uh, alkoxy carbonyl or the alcohol carbonate uh, functional group. Following that is the uh, carboxylates. Um, so these are the, the charged uh, versions of the carboxylic acids, if you will. The next functional group is the carboxylic acid. And this is denoted as a carbonyl with an OH group um, attached to the carbon. And these are usually uh, drawn like this. So that will be um, called acetic acid uh, from the acetyl group that's present there. Or ethanoic acid. So we're using two different functional groups to describe that molecule in that particular case. So that brings us nicely into the um, ester group, and the ester group is made out of a carboxylate functionality. But this time we've got some alkyl group attached to the oxygen, so rather than having OH as in carboxylic acid, we now have uh, some alkyl group there. So I think what's important for uh, the ester functional group is how we actually go about naming it. So if the molecule I've drawn here has got an ethyl group attached to the oxygen, as shown here, and it's got this butyl group, because we must include that carbonyl carbon when we level these up, so you've got one, two, three, and four in that part of the molecule. So that's butyl. And this one's just simply got uh, two carbons in the ethyl bit. So how do we go about naming this ester? Do we use the butyl? Uh, ethanoate or do we use the ethyl butanoate functionality? Well the way we name it is we name uh, this part of the molecule first so it would be ethyl butanoate. Perhaps less common is the hydroperoxy functional group as in here um, and I suppose its cousin or its sister if you will is the, the peroxy group, functional group. Both of these contain two oxygens. And the last in the series is um, the ether group. Now the ether group is um, very common, as in diethyl ether, which is a very common solvent. And ether groups basically just have uh, an oxygen um, connected to two carbons. So it's the oxygen that denotes the functional group there, and that's an ether group, a very common. So that brings us to the end of this uh, tutorial on oxygen-based functional groups. I'll put these worksheets up on Epistemio for you to download. So bye for now.